All right, let's get started. Like mentioned before, we're going to use images as our base, and there's a neat command in Rhino called Picture Frame that lets us put a reference image in our scene. I've already set up all the images in the correct places and scaled them to their appropriate sizes. This was kind of a tedi tedious task to do, so I wanted to spare you guys from going through that process. Nevertheless, I'll show you how I placed the first images so you have a general idea how it was done. First, most important, we create a layer for our picture frames. Go to our Layers tab and click on the New Layers button to create a new layer. Let's call it Picture Frames. Now let's create some sub-layers and call them Ground Floor, First Floor and Roof. Let's make the ground floor our current layer and let's type in picture frame to start importing our floor plans. I've included a directory called picture frames where you can find all the images used. Let's select the image called ground floor plan and press OK. Let's also maximize our top view as we're going to work in this viewport. It is asking us to specify our first corner of our first picture frame. Let's use the origin 00. Type in 00 or turn in grid snap to snap to the origin to pick, to pick the insertion point. Now we need to specify the length of the picture frame. Don't worry about the length, just make sure you draw it orthogonal by holding down the shift key, like this, and the size more or less like this. As you can see our floor plan image was nicely placed in our scene. Pretty cool right? The only thing we need to do is scale it to the right size. We're going to scale it to size using a reference distance. According to Wikipedia, the distance between the columns is 4.75 meters. Let's first draw a line with length 4.75, we're going to use as a reference. Type in line and hit enter. And let's pick the center of this column as our start point. Now type in 4.75 and hit enter and hold shift to draw the line nicely orthogonal. Now type in scale and hit enter to start the scale command. Select our picture frame and hit enter. As our origin point, we're going to choose the center of our column again. Now we can either specify a scaling factor as a number or specify a reference point. We're going to specify a reference point. This is going to be the center of the other column. Because we want the distance between the columns to be the distance of our reference line. Hold shift again and pick the center of the other column. As you can see, the picture frame is scaled using the first column center. Let's select our line's end and ensure the 4.75 meters distance between the columns. To do a double check, let's measure a door. They should be approximately 73 centimeters wide. Well, it's a couple of centimeters off, but no worries. Alright, we've scaled our floor plans to the appropriate size. The only thing missing is splitting the picture frame up into three pieces, so we can put the floor plans on top of each other. Let's draw two lines to make this happen. Type in line again and hit enter. Draw the first one more or less here, and hold shift to draw orthogonal, or if you like, click on the orthogonal button from the status bar to, activ to activate the orthogonal drawing option. Type in copy and let's copy your line more or less here. When we've done that, type in split and hit enter. Select our picture frame as our object to split and hit enter again. Now select the two lines we just drew to be our colors and hit enter. Ok, we nicely split the picture frame into different floor plans. Let's delete the cutting lines and the reference line as they were just temporal geometry. Before we start moving them on top of each other, let's add them first to their appropriate layers. So the ground floor is already drawn in the ground floor layer. Let's select the first floor and move it to the first floor layer. Right click on the layer and select change object layer. Now let's do the same for the roof floor plan. Let's start by moving the first floor plan on top of the ground floor plan first. 
Let's first look, lock our ground floor layer to not be able to accidentally select it and transform it. Select our first floor and I'll show you a nice trick you can use to move the images to the right spot. We're going to temporarily adjust the transparency of the image to be able to move it accurately to its place. With our image selected, go to the Properties tab. On top, you'll see a button that says Material. Let's click on that button to open up the Materials option we can adjust for our surface. A picture frame is nothing more than a surface that has a texture applied to it. In our case, the floor plan image we selected when we drew our picture frame. If you open up the Textures tab, you see that under Color, it has our selected image. There are a lot of settings one can mess around with in the Materials settings. They're mostly used when you want to create a render of your model, like applying a material to your surface, like wood, glass, steel, etc. For now, the setting we're interested in is a transparency setting. Let's set the transparency to 50% and you can do this by dragging the arrow or double clicking on the number and typing in 50 and hitting enter. As you can see our first floor plan is transparent. This will make our life much more easy. Let's use our gumball to move it to place. Turn on the gumball by clicking on the gumball button from the status bar if it was not turned on yet. Now we select our image and we can use the plane icon to move it to its place. Just click and drag. As you can see, it is a little bit of a tedious job to get it right. Now if you're satisfied with the result, let's turn back the transparency to zero. Select our image and go again to the Properties tab, click on the Material button and set the transparency to zero. Finally, let's move the roof to, it to the right spot. First let's lock the first floor level by clicking on the lock icon. Now, the same procedure as before. Let's select our roof level, go to the Properties tab, click on the Material button and set the transparency to 50%. When we've done that, it's time to move it to its place. Select the image and either use the gumball again or simply just click and drag the image to its place. When you've found the right spot, select the image again and don't forget to switch the transparency back to zero. The only thing missing is moving them vertically, to the right height. Let's switch to the perspective view and let's start with the roof floor plan. Select it and let's use our gumball to move it in the Z direction. Click on the blue arrow and type in 6 and hit enter. We're going to use 3 meter as our floor to floor dimensions. Now we go, now go to our layers tab and unlock the first floor layer. Select the first floor picture frame, hit the blue arrow on the gumball and type in 3 and hit enter. Now we have nicely placed our floor plans to the right spots on heights in the model. Like mentioned before, I've put the rest of the images, the sections and the elevations already in place. You can find them under the picture frame layer in their respective sublayers, section 1 and 2, elevation front, back, left and right. Lastly, let's save our work and please stick around for the next chapter where we're going to start setting up our 2D line work.